Financial Survival Network, helping you survive and thrive in the new economy. Go to carrylutz.com and sign up for 30 free micro trainings on financial survival. The show is brought to you by Miles Franklin. When it comes to protecting your wealth, you know there's nothing better than gold and silver. And when I want gold and silver, I go to Miles Franklin because they've been around 22 years. And when you buy, they ship. For more information, go to milesfranklin.com or call them at 800-822-8080 and get a free quote. Fourteen ninety WGCH. This is Carrie Lutz, and you're listening to the Financial Survival Network. Is it time to delete Facebook? Are the raids on gold and silver really different this time? Are they masking some cataclysmic event that the Fed and the government know are coming, but they don't want you to know? Well, with us now is Chris Dwayne of of don't dash tread dash on dot me also known as the silver shield and the sons of liberty academy hey chris welcome back always a pleasure good good to be back and we're starting to make this more frequent and uh you know i am starting to enjoy the banter that we get going (laughs) hey me too because nobody's talking about this stuff your latest video here delete facebook yeah pretty much what if i could boil it down correct me if I'm not accurate, is that uh, Facebook is the latest edge of consumerism. It is emblematic or symptomatic of a vacuous uh, society, a civilization that's lacking a core, that uh, nothing means anything other than your what people think is going on in your life rather than what really is. Is that kind of accurate? Yeah, I mean, the the way I look at it is, um, you know, the elite have been pumping consumerism on us, you know, since World War II, and it's served them very well. I mean, the uh, the baby boomers have certainly grasped onto it. It's led to a great amount of, uh, you know, wealth being created, a great amount of debt being created. Um, but we're coming to its mathematical end, and the elite know um, that if they want to secure their power, they have to, you know, Give them, give the, give the masses another opium. So, um, you know, one of the little pieces of uh, of art I found in to make the videos is says that Facebook is opium for the masses, uh, and it reminds me of you know Karl Marx, Karl Marx's quote. Um, but I think the real underlying thing with Facebook is that it's an artificial substitution for the real thing, much like our fiat money is artificial substitution for the real money. Um, we, we can, you know, make, you know, uh, images in our mind and, and relationships and give things power and stuff like that. Um, but at the end of the day, the real thing will never, um, you know, the, the real thing will never make up or the fake thing will never make up for the real thing. Um, so just like how we, I mean, we've talked for hours about how, you know, we have fiat digital paper, you know, electronic money, that's ghost of money and that silver and gold are real honest money. Uh, well, your Facebook relationships are, are are axiomatic of that, of, you know, here you have these, you know, hundreds of friends and these artificial little connections and these little comments and likes and dislikes and just artificial, you know, niceties. Um, and, you know, people think that that's a real life and that's real uh, friendship and that's real, you know, real things. And for many people, it is. It's sad. Um, but when you get down to it, you're very lucky to have one or two or three really good friends. And these are people that have, you know, been there th- with you through the hard and tough times and they really opened up with them. Um, and I think it's, it's sad, but it's part of where we are as a society that uh, we have embraced Facebook as much as it has, um, knowing that it is, um, you know, really a poor excuse for the real thing. Um, you know, and I even threw in a little thing saying it's, it's sort of like porn. It's, a, you know, porn has grown to this big thing because, People are, you know, trying to fill a, you know, an emotional hole there uh, and nothing's going to beat the real thing. So here we have our fake relationships with our fake sex and our fake money. And I'm and the whole point of this is that it is all going to end um, when this reality sets in. And I believe it's going to happen with the collapse of the dollar. All artificiality will be 
people will shake it off like a bad habit. And, uh, you know, I think Facebook will look back at this 10 years from now and going, wow, that was kind of a big waste of time. It's definitely a waste of time. It's addictive. You could spend a lot of time on there. And now it's, it's not how many friends you have. It's how many likes you have, (laughs) how many, how many Twitter followers are going after you, how many, how big your LinkedIn network is. And like you say that it's all artificial it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't make you any happier. And maybe it's helpful for business. Maybe that is a plus. But like you said, the fakeness, the artificiality of our existence is going to fall by the wayside. And if you listen to Gerald Salenti, he's also talking about the artificiality of our food mm-hmm. also going mm-hmm. by the wayside, that we're going to have this this return to quality of like craftsmanship and for societies, export driven societies that were created to satisfy our thirst for this garbage, they're going to be hit even harder because they're holding all these dollars that'll become worthless. And they've got uh, whole economies built on just satisfying our fakeness. And they're not a consumer society like China they're not going to become a consumerist society, even though the government's trying to get the people to consume, because once they see all these things blow up, they're going to recoil in horror and they're not going to be working anymore. So it's instability all over the world for this transition to take place. And, you know, to see these websites just implode, I don't think anyone is prepared for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you mentioned how, um, you know, it, it, the, the social media is good for, uh, for business. Um, many of you guys know that I came from a, uh, a, a info marketing background after I left the car business uh, and I worked in with a, a program to help people um, in, uh, invest in retail or in foreclosed properties. And, um, you know, I was very proud of what we did there because it was a very, I think, a very real program. It was uh, investors helping investors um, on how to clear the housing market when the banks and the governments were completely inept. We, we provide the free market, um, you know, opportunity for people to go in there and clean it up. Um, but once I realized, you know, once I got more into the business, you know, and I got, I got a, a kind of feel for what we, you know, did, the majority of the time was really spent on, you know, lead generation and, uh, you know, and conversion and traffic and all this other stuff, which led to this uh, marketing uh, underground. Um, and there's a lot of really bright, smart guys out there. Uh, and I posted a video of this one guy, um, Kern, uh, who's one of these mega gurus in the Internet marketing business. And um, he basically talks about how um, in order to successfully market to people on the internet, you almost have to make them feel like they're stupid. Um, and that, and that, uh, they're so stupid that if they can even do a little bit of what, um, these smart gurus can do, then they can be, uh, you know, that they can be, uh, successful. Um, and, you know, he talks about how low self-esteem leads to profits. Um, and, you know, he puts uh, his put hands up there and you have to watch the video because, you know, I went looking for another video on Internet marketing. I came across this one and this one just ripped it apart. But anyways, he, he's he's there and he, he goes, uh, you know, and then once they have low self-esteem, then you can prey on them like little evil. And then he cuts himself off. And but it shows the, the predator mentality yeah. of the marketer. And I and I threw in there to balance that um, Bill Hicks, claim, you know, saying, you know, in one of his last standups, you know, if you're a marketer uh, and you're in marketing, kill yourself because you ruin everything that's good. And that's the manipulation that goes in, in, involved in the, um, you know, the, the, the mass marketing, you know, even this Joseph Coney thing. It, to me, it's so evil to manipulate people to, to take upon their good uh, intentions of helping others, um, but then having a subsection of, you know, it's another war for oil. Um, it's purposely done to manipulate people. And I'm, I'm telling you folks, when the dollar collapses, all these other artificialities will fall by the wayside and anybody who participated in them, whether it's the wall street bankers, the people on Madison Avenue, the governments, the, the lawyers, the, you know, all the people that are making millions of dollars pumping this illusion, um, are going to be running for their lives. I don't doubt it. And talk about these people, they all 
think they're doing it for a higher purpose. I don't know if you caught my I'll, little uh, uh, rant on uh, the homeless shelters in New York, no longer accepting private food donations because it might have too much salt. It could have too much trans fats and it might not be healthy for someone who's starving or who would starve to get. And this is just the nanny state. All these people think they know better. They're doing all this stuff that's going to hurt you for your own good because they know better. They know what you should be doing. Mm-hmm. And well, that that's the, that's the fundamental flaw of all centralized power structures. And, 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 you know, you and I are both not Democrat or Republican. We see through the artificial false oh, yeah. left, right paradigm. Um, but I, I, I don't care what centralized organization you're working with, um, whether it's a military, political, uh, economic corporation, town hall, uh, you know, even your local Tea Party or Occupy Wall Street, there's always going to be some sort of megalomaniac, power hungry person that's going to rise to the top. And any centralized organization is based on the fundamental lie that a few people know better than everybody. Yep. And that's the beauty of free, a really true free market capitalism, not the state capitalism or fascism that we have right now. Um, it's it's a truly free market capitalistic society uh, will allow the millions and billions and trillions of uh, inner um, actions uh, between people based on, you know, honest money, honest weights and measures, which would be honest money um, and their ability to choose what's best for them, both for the seller and the buyer. Um, and anytime you have a centralized structure, I don't care what it is. Uh, it innately stops some sort of human progression. And in this case, you know, homeless shelters, the government has never um, done anything that the private sector hasn't done before. Okay. Yep. So if you think about it, our military was based off of our own private militias. Our school system was based off of our own private school, uh, you know, system. Our welfare uh, agencies were based off of the charitable free market, charitable organizations. There is nothing the government has done or created ever that has been more successful than the, the original, um, the original, uh, you know, intent of whatever that organization was. And this is just a perfect example. I tell you what, folks, if you're in New York City and I was a former New Yorker, you're in Greenwich there. I used to live in, you know, live and work in Summit, New Jersey. Um, if you are in Manhattan when this dollar collapses, you might as well be saying Heil Bloomberg because this guy is going to lord over every single action of your life, even more so than what he's got right now. Um, he's already what extended his term beyond what it was originally. Didn't yeah, he wasn't was he not allowed to, to do a third term? Yeah, there was a term limit that was put in at the time of Giuliani, which stopped him from going uh, two yep. term uh, over two terms. And they amended the. I think they had a referendum, or or the council just uh, amended the city's charter to allow him to serve a third term. And Honestly, I don't think he's going to run for a fourth because I think he's despised now. Yeah. I mean, my feelings about the guy have come. I was never really enthusiastic about him. Yeah. But, you know, now he's just, you can't smoke. You can't eat a damn uh, greasy hot dog. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if I ever told you, but I once went to one of his, uh, his employee picnics because he had a house, uh, probably still has it, uh, his summer country house right by my town Mm -hmm. and you know there were three thousand employees there all eating cotton candy hot dogs hamburger (laughs) but man get let that guy become mayor and all of a sudden none of that uh we can't we can't have that that's bad you know and and that's the other thing like you know i i'll agree with him on cigarettes i don't smoke i quit smoke and i'll agree with him on you know fatty or whatever foods or sodas or whatever but who is it that like the, the idea that, you know, if we truly are a, a, a society by and for the people, um, if I cannot tell you or force you or make you uh, do something in an interpersonal relationship, um, if I cannot kill you, if I cannot force something upon you, if I have no right to do that. How is it possible a group of people all of a sudden have that authority over the individual? It, it's it, if all the power derives from the individual, how can a group of individuals have more power than than what we can't do in, in a personal level? Exactly. Um, and and 
and and you know if, uh, fast food or or all this other stuff. Who's to say that that's what we eat every day? I mean, you're like you know if I go out drinking, maybe I will have a cigarette. Why is that illegal? You know, like and why is it any of their business? Yeah, why is who it are their they? Yeah. Who are they? You know, where do they get off with this? I mean, that's what bothers me. It's yeah. you know, I don't smoke cigarettes. Okay, I quit. I like a cigar every now and then, but even that I stopped doing because it's really not good for you. And every now and then, once a year, twice a year, I'll have one. Mm-hmm. But if I want to do it and I'm not interfering with any anyone else's happiness, why can't I do it? And, that, and that's, what, that's what that's what liberty is. I think I think people should be allowed to do whatever they want to do so long as it doesn't interfere with the rights or, you know, the 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 person property or, or of somebody else. I mean, if you want to smoke pot, if you want to sniff paint, you want to, you know, do all sorts of crazy stuff, like jump off a building roof. God bless you, man. It's America. But I tell you what, the moment that your, your uh, interpretation of freedom impedes upon mine, that's where the line is. Um, And, you know, a part of this collapse scenario is that people that live in urban areas um, are surrounded by people who think that they have the right to do something to you or have rights over your over your lives and over your um, property and over your income that you earn. Yep, and all of that and yep. nothing we haven't talked about before. That's why you need to get this to protect your yourself. You got the nice uh, 1922 peace dollar. What are you going to whip out? <laughs> I, I'm not whipping, but I've got. Oh shoot, where is it? I've got. A, a 2011 uh, nice. silver eagle. eagle. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's uh, freedom is what it's all about. You really can never excel to your full potential because you need the freedom to succeed, but you also must have the freedom to fail. Yeah. If you don't have the ability to fail, then you're never really going to succeed. And you know what it's like? I mean, you've got younger kids now, but I remember when my kids were in the soccer league and you know they were they were a pretty sucky team i have to say my mm-hmm. kids would agree my especially my older daughter's team and guess what we had the last uh, game then we all went out for pizza and what did every kid get a trophy, trophy. Yeah. right oh yeah. you're so good you you, <laughs> you you had sportsmanship you enjoyed the game mm. what about what about rewarding people for achievement for excelling and when you like reward mediocrity you just encourage it and you produce mediocrity yeah and that's of course that's the point of it i mean that's what they've done to you know my societies on every level and that's why the 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 problem is at the end of the day no one wants to take responsibility for themselves so they want to have you know some force to you know, yeah. make them do it or, or tell other peoples to do it, you know, and, and, uh, again, the dollar is the crux of all this. When the dollar collapses, there will be no, you know, uh, department of Homeland security. There'll be no, uh, Bloomberg, uh, food inspection station because the, they'll, the whole system will collapse. We have a too highly complex system and it, uh, without the dollar holding it together, um, all this artificial power, this paper tiger that, uh, this huge federal bureaucracy has become, uh, will fail simply because the people that would uh, work for it don't have the money. They, they would have all their paychecks bounce and, and uh, their entire life savings wiped away. And I've got the next topic for your video. I, okay. I was reading Currency Wars by Jim Rickards. And mm-hmm. you, could, you could take it or leave it. He's an insider. The historical record that he presents definitely spot on. Mm-hmm. What he thinks the system should uh, evolve into, you know, going back on a gold standard, but in his opinion, the central bank should be buying and selling gold to maintain its parity with gold. But forget that. The yeah. one thing he talks about is this law, and I can't remember the guy's name, of complex, complicated systems, complex systems that they wind up requiring more and more energy just to keep the system running, let mm-hmm. alone producing anything or increasing standards of living, anything else. But because the system is so complex, it consumes more and more energy just to perpetuate itself. And eventually one little bug, one little miscue can bring the whole thing down like Iceland not accepting the dollar. Okay, Mm -hmm. like 
uh, Portugal, Iran. Portugal, <laughs> like, Greece, like, yeah. well, like that's Comex default on the silver exchange. I started yeah. off the year, Carrie, with, uh, um, you know, two predictions. I said counterparty risk is going to be the most popular word by the end of this year because um, all paper assets, all currencies, all are, all are going to suffer from the counterparty risk um, of, you know, people not coming through. And I said that there, um, whatever the event is that brings the system down will be a real event, not a paper event, not a political event, not a um, not a media event. It's going to be a real interruption in the artificial life that we have. And whether that's oil, physical oil being shut off the markets, whether that's physical silver being, um, you know, off the COMEX, whether, you know, some some real thing has to happen. It's not going to be, um, you know, Greece, uh, you know, defaulting on debt. It's not going to be some bond payment. It's not going to be some, uh, you know, high frequency trading thing. It's it's not going to be these things that are constantly in the, in the news. It has to be something that is a physical thing that they can't paper over, that they can't propagandize, that they can't spin. Um, and that only then will people start waking up to this, you know, insane lie that we're all living. And if you're Ben Bernanke, <laughs> how do you sleep at night? Do you take, do you take uh, Valium? Xanax? No. Uh, no I, valerium root. <laughs> yeah. Listen, all what? these guys, and I've said this before, propaganda is not for the masses. It's for those that participate in the system and make the system happen. I really believe, after reading probably about three of Ben Bernanke's incredibly boring books, that he really believes in what he's doing. Uh, without a doubt, I don't think that he gets it. Uh, I think that he's been sniffing so much Keynesian and gas that he he has no real clue uh, about the the role of silver and gold and honest money and that if they really if they just print enough money that they can make this all happen and quite honestly he's been proven correct over and over again if they just print enough money this all goes away and this all happens and works up until the day it doesn't and the the ramifications of being on the wrong side on that day is unbelievable. So, um, you know, people talk about, oh, I don't want to invest in silver because it's going to be confiscated or no, these guys don't get it. You have to realize this paradigm has been in existence and been the most successful paradigm ever for the last 80, 90 years. Uh, and they have no, no reason. And they're the third generation to do this. We all know that the men that created this paradigm were absolute forward thinking off the charts geniuses. Mm -hmm. You're sick people. But they were geniuses. You don't get guys like David Rockefeller and, you know, the Rothschilds pulling off the stuff that they did uh, without being incredibly, uh, you know, smart. But each successive generation lacked the uh, lacked the uh, hard work and th forethought and, and intelligence uh, because they're living off the fruits of the, the older generation, much like. You know, the boomers are living off of the, the greatest generation's wealth and that, you sure. know, it's, it, you know, and then, you know, my generation gets devolved and the millennial generation gets devolved. Um, but I think that the guys that that created this current paradigm were incredibly brilliant um, and forward thinking individuals. They didn't create a system that benefited humanity, uh, but it did work for them. And they have uh, created, um, you know, foundations, institutions, colleges, curriculums. Uh, propaganda, media, all to reinforce this lie and that they really don't, at the end of the day, the guys that are running this thing really don't get what's going on. Yeah, well, it's going to be interesting. That's for certain. Yep. And, you know, it's, uh, I can't believe you read three of Ben Bernanke's books, though. That says yeah, a lot. Yeah, inflation targeting book and <laughs> it's just incredibly dry, boring. You know, and, that, and that's the thing. They purposely make things that are simple complex to repel the mind right economics is incredibly simple my three-year-old understands money better than i believe ben bernanke does <laughs> um but they have to create it so much so and all these uh illusions i mean god when i first heard about derivatives and i'm like wait wait a minute it, it, it's a side bet it's it's like betting on football games like yeah. i don't own either team but i can i can buy uh, uh, a stake in the outcome of, of the game or the price of it. Uh -huh. um, and how is that not gambling? Oh, they repealed the gambling laws because they were afraid that it was going to be, uh, you know, a problem with that. 
but they have to make it so complex and so crazy in order to sell it to other investors and 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 build up the value of those sure. uh, of those guys because you know the guy that's selling the these derivatives is you know scheming off all these fees knowing that it's a completely failed system and that's the main reason why all these asset managers don't sell physical silver and gold there's not enough profit in it from them. Yeah. it's not worth their time you know yeah. what, what are you going to do sell a seat you know some credit default swap uh, you know and make you know a hundred million dollars off of selling something or are you going to have to sell God, I don't even know what it would take to sell that in gold and bullion and make the one or half a percent profit on it. I don't think um, there's enough to do it. No, you know? it wouldn't be. Even if you make, and, uh, you know, if you sell it at a three dollar <laughs> premium, you're making ten percent. There's yeah. no real potential for a windfall. That's no. for sure. All right, Chris, we got to wrap up, but uh, it's good talking to you and yep. glad we connected. So, just uh, for the audience, uh, if you're listening and you want to find out more about chris uh, where do we find you we got uh don't dash tread dash on dot me is the main blog uh our youtube channel is just blowing up carrie i think i'm getting close to 1.8 million views uh um, wow. and we've really only been like the channel's been up for six months but i've only been uh really working on it for the last three months um amazing. and it, it's just uh it's an amazing thing to see it uh blow up um, and these videos like delete Facebook and all these other things, um, you know, really strike a nerve with people. And the way that I have the series laid out is that, you know, people will come in on one video and go, ah, oh, that's pretty cool. And then they'll maybe look at the, you know, 80 other videos that I put up there. And when you start exactly. seeing that all these individual issues like silver, like the government, like, you know, the TSA, like, uh, you know, Bloomberg, all these mm -hmm. issues are all interconnected. Um, and that's why the, the, the YouTube channel truth never told, or the greatest truth never told, uh, really is about the big picture. And that, um, exactly. you know, unless you get your mind wrapped around this now, um, you know, <laughs> yep. this is time to wake up folks. Yeah. It's time to wake up, time to delete Facebook. And also, uh, if you want to delete find fiat money, yeah, delete it all. <laughs> Just hit the yep. delete key. Yep. And if you want to find, uh, other talks of chris and i we've got a bunch of them on carry yeah i think you've got a, a million uh, downloads on your site yeah so we broke a million a few uh, weeks back and you know you. It's, it's picking up and uh, just wait till wait till silver and gold break because at that point everybody's going to be uh doing their you their uh, their searches on youtube yeah going what and is on this? google like yeah. wow who said this was going to happen yeah. And uh, hopefully the the web will still be up and they'll be able to find out the truth at that point. Right. That's right. And it still won't be too late. I'll, I, I could tell people right now when silver gets to one hundred and twenty dollars an ounce and uh, starts blowing up, it will still not be too late. It's exactly. still dramatically undervalued. So long as the dollar is the denomination of that silver and you can trade your fake fiat debt based, you know, mathematically inevitably going to collapse fiat money uh, for real physical silver. Um, that's a good day. Hey, absolutely. And hey, one last thing. You saw David Morgan's uh, YouTube the other day, right? Yes. Yeah, that was pretty big. Uh, that's a friend of ours, uh, brother John F. Yep. And uh, there he was, man, putting that out there. And I thought it was incredibly well done and really, really accurate. So yeah, I, go. I, I wrote David. I think that was his best video that he's done in a long time. So not a question. Uh, yeah, not a question. All right. Hey, we'll have a link up to it on the site. I think we already do. And we will catch up with you soon.